Fuego erupts fire, and this makes this particular volcano a most interesting one. The shape of it from a distance is a perfect cone as if. Well, when you get a close-up and you can look at it actually from a safe distance, this is what you will see. A relatively shield-shaped volcano that's near the summit with a, a lot of fumaroles coming from the main crater and also some vents around it when the, the height of the volcano is, the pressure is not enough to come from the full height. It comes from that side. And when it erupts, it's like this. You, you can see it in the dark better. During daylight, it erupts also, but you don't see this amber, this glowing red lava, this hot lava coming out, volcanic bombs and pyroclastics and ash. The softer particles and finer ones erupt directly to the air, and the heavier ones just roll down the hill, roll down the mountain, 3,600 or 700 meters. And this volcano is located in the Guatemala almost subtropical climate and you can see there is plenty of moisture all the time around and yet this volcano is so high it goes above all of that but in the rare moments that we can see the whole area clear you can see that the landscape is shaped by these eruptions continuous daily eruptions of this volcano an ash plume is going usually toward the west toward the pacific ocean as you can see prevailing wind in that direction and uh, the lava flows from this volcano down the slope can uh, actually affect the communities around it, as you can see in this uh, hazard map, which just, just shows the risk of the lava flowing toward the communities around it and pyroclastics and the uh, uh, material that can form in this part of the Ring of Fire in Guatemala, where the actual uh, uh, cocos plate is undergoing subduction under the North American plate, uh, creating a, you know, a trench and then a, a accretionary wedge, then the lab slab melting and creating these pimples we call volcano, when the slab is melted and rises again back to the surface of the earth. Fascinating.